Welcome back. It's still TV3 New Day. Let's do some business now. And the Finance Minister, Ken Furiata, is expected to present the media budget's review and supplementary estimates to Parliament this month. This uh, will be in accordance with Section 28 of the Public Financial Management Act 2016, Act 921. A key feature of the upcoming review will be the presentation of two supplementary estimates. This has become necessary due to the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic on the government's budget. For me, key will be a review of our revenue, uh, what we expected to get uh, in the 2020 budget, so what government estimated to have gotten, and it will be a review of that. Key for me will also be the supplementary budgets. We are hoping to see some uh, hope for businesses. And so uh, don't forget that President Tukufuado said that they can't bring back the economy back to life, but they can't bring back dead uh, uh, people back to life. And so for me, I'm looking for some hope for the economy. But let's speak to the experts. Karich Kinsley Mate joins me via Zoom and he's a senior economist with Data Bank Research. Good morning, Karich. Good morning, Karich. Hello, good morning. <laughs> Karish, right, can you hear me? Yes. yes, right. Yeah, so, it so better. <laughs> yes, it's better. So, if, if you can hear me, what will be your expectations as uh, Finance Minister Kenofrata readies to go to Parliament uh, this month to present a media well, review? Well, good morning, Etonam. I, I, there are two main events that I expect will happen on the day. The first being the regular expectations that the existing or original budget numbers to be reviewed mm -hmm. and they would have to be reviewed because the assumptions underlying the original budget has changed dramatically okay to the extent that revenue is adversely impacted and there's a lot of pressure to spend more and mm -hmm. um, not just to save life but to save livelihoods as well so some of these numbers mean that or the development with these numbers mean that the original deficit target and borrowing plan would no longer be feasible mm -hmm. and so that review is expected but mm -hmm. the other event which I also expect would be the presentation of a supplementary budget. Right. You know, this normally doesn't always happen, but there are instances when it happens where there's a need to spend more to execute certain agenda. So mm -hmm. in, in this particular year, because of COVID-19 and the need to spend to ensure that we start to think about life after COVID, bringing back the economy on track and in parts of growth, Mm -hmm. There's a need to actually put forward a supplementary budget that will start to trigger that recovery process. Mm -hmm. And so, generally speaking, I expect two main events. One okay. that reviews and revises the numbers of the existing budget, and one that presents a supplementary budget that gives us a roadmap to what the government is looking to do as far as growth and recovery is concerned post-COVID. Let's look at the journey to the recovery of, of the economy. Now, I'm interested in specific sectors. What will be the sectors you want to see some revitalization? Great. And what we've come to understand is that COVID is not just a health problem, but also an economic problem. But then it also means that the solutions must also begin from the health sector down to the other sectors of the economy. And so one of the areas I expect that the... Uh, any any budget and any program that seeks to restore the economy back to growth, I expect to start from the health sector mm -hmm. and particularly pharmaceutical industry. We need to have a situation where we can have a plan that would ensure that we do not run away, uh, run out of supply of medical consumables, PPEs, and other medications that are necessary to, to, to get a firm grip on this virus mm -hmm. and restore the health of the people. Mm -hmm. But I also believe that that will be very linked to the manufacturing sector, because for, for we to have these um, um, facilities in place, we also would need the manufacturing sector to be very, very linked to production of health and medical consumables. So that would also link to the manufacturing sector. Mm -hmm. Then you also have to go into what you call the survival um, products, things that human beings will need for their daily survival. And first of all, it has to be food. And we saw the example of what can happen to food supply and food demand mm -hmm. when the, uh, the, the, the situation is not normal? You recall what, when we we're going into the lockdown and there was a shock in demand for food items. It propelled food inflation to a significant level of about 15%, two times on food inflation. Specifically, vegetables experienced 37% increase in inflation. 
And that tells you that we need to also channel some of these programs towards production in the agri sector, but not just production, but also distribution. Because if you have production in a situation where there is bumper harvest in some sectors, but there's shortage in other markets, mm. then you still will not solve the problem. So I expect the program to also target the value chain of agribusiness from production to distribution to value addition. Let's look at revenue, for instance. I know government uh, for 2020 had targeted a uh, some 1.5 billion US dollars as expectations from the petroleum sector uh, because it had pegged crude oil at some $62 a barrel. And we know what has happened to the uh, oil sector, crude oil sector this year. What will be your expectations in terms of slashing of some of these uh, revenue expectations? Well, I expect a massive slashing or discounting of the revenue expectation for 2020. And that is largely on the back of what we are seeing on the oil market. Now, if you look at what is happening right now and you compare it to the original budget, you see that there's a massive negative deviation. In the original budget, the expectation was that the average price of Brent would be about $62 per barrel, and that was inputted into the benchmark price and revenue expectations. Mm. Today, it's difficult to see average price for 2020 beyond $30 to $40 maximum. And so I expect that that price will be slashed significantly. Mm. And that will tantamount to slashing the expectation by 35 to 50%. 35 to 50%. At the first quarter fiscal numbers, mm. and we noticed that there's, there was an 82% shortfall mm. in petroleum revenue. And so that tells you that there needs to be a significant downward revision to the revenue expectation from crude oil. Mm. Let's talk briefly before I let you go about uh, the deficit cap. I mean, according to the Fiscal Responsibility Act, we can't spend more than 5% of revenue uh, of, of, of uh, the uh, budget 20, uh, of, of our budget. I, I want to ask you, should we just rule it out for 2020 altogether, considering all that is happening? Well, yes, um, good as the intention and the positives that could come from abiding by the Fiscal Responsibility Act may be, um, it may also have the consequences of stifling and bringing the economy to a halt if something is not done about it mm. or within this particular situation. Mm. Now, given the developments we are seeing across all the revenue lines and with expenditure pressure, and given the provisional or prelim assessments that we saw in March, April, that mm -hmm. the deficit is likely to go above 6% or probably above 7%, mm -hmm. it is inevitable that the Fiscal Responsibility Act, which imposes fiscal constraint of a ceiling of 5% on the overall deficit and a mandatory primary surplus, mm -hmm. that act may have to be suspended okay. for 2020 at least, because mm -hmm. the revenue and expenditure numbers show that it will, be, it will not be feasible to continue to expect to abide by that. And so the expectation again is that the Fiscal Responsibility Act, if not officially announced to be suspended, will be officially announced when the media review is done for suspension, at least for 2020. But wouldn't that be dangerous for the economy? I mean, already we know that COVID-19 has taken a chunk of our revenue. Suspending this Fiscal, uh, this, uh, fiscal Responsibility Act and what it puts on uh, in terms of our uh, deficits, won't that give government an opportunity to overspend this an election year? And we know election years are usually characterized by humongous expenditure. Well, in the, in the very short term, I, I don't see any danger, especially if you look at the 2020 development, not just related to Ghana, but the global situation. I don't see danger if the suspension is just for a short term. The danger will come in if we do not quickly reinstate these fiscal controls, mm. because then we would have gone past the situation, assuming there's been a vaccine for COVID-19 and the global economy returns to normal and we still do not reinstate our fiscal controls, then it becomes dangerous and then we will start to lose investor confidence. But in the short term, in 2020 at least, I don't see any danger because the global economy is shifting towards a significant budget deficit. And that needs to be done to save the economy and introduce some momentum into aggregate demand. So in the short term, I don't see danger and I don't see investors punishing us for it. It is only if we don't restore it as quickly as possible, especially when the global situation normalizes, mm -hmm. then there might be danger. So for you, two things, a review of uh, our revenue target as well as a look at revitalizing economies that have been hardly hit. But I didn't hear you speak about the hospitality industry, even though it's one of the industries that have been uh, hardly hit. 
Absolutely, and that's a good observation. I, I, I will count it as oversight on my part. And we cannot discount the, the, the impact and the, the effect of COVID-19 on the hospitality industry. We are aware of the global travel restrictions. We also shut our bad borders and the airports to any incomings except goods. I think the, the, the hospitality industry is really hard hit. One of the figures we are picking up is that hotel occupancy rate has dropped mm -hmm. from an average of 70% to about 30%. Or lower and that is revenue loss or revenue for gone for that sector then again if you look at the tourism industry mm. that is the sector that provides the fourth largest foreign exchange earnings for this country and so it is a sector that is also hard hit and requires some fiscal support mm. and that should work through the the, the the ghana tourism authorities getting their members together providing what exactly their needs are and how the government can support. But also, it must also be on the basis of principle of reciprocity, so that if the mm. government helps certain sectors and companies today, not mm. restricted to just the hospitality sector, but across the economy, once things normalize, all these companies and every individual company should be prepared to also contribute their quota back to the national coffers for the economy to continue to run robustly. Courage, we are grateful that you made time to speak with us this morning. Courage Kinsley Marty is a senior economist with Data Bank Research, helping us understand uh, what expectations or what to expect during the uh, media review. And we are expecting Finance Minister Ken Furiata uh, this month to go to Parliament to present two supplementary budgets, also to look at review of uh, our revenue target as well as look at a deficit of five percent. Uh,